That's good. It's the worst for me. Grab it. <laughs> So today we have the Polaroid Snap Camera. Cool. With Zinc technology. Uh, how old is it? This, this has been around for a couple years? This is actually a product that I've owned for a year, two years or so, but they're still selling. Uh, they're pretty popular. It's $99. It's affordable. Super cheap. And the whole magic behind it is that it has these special zinc papers in it. Zinc? Zinc. Zero ink. Zero ink. Yeah, so the paper comes blank, mm -hmm. of course, much like other Polaroids. And the magic happens in the printing process. It's a thermal printer that changes small crystals inside Ooh. and produces color in the outputted image. All of the ink is essentially already on the paper. And then it just melts the ink and then colors happen. And then by making colors, pictures. The camera itself is, is super basic, uh, micro SD card slot. This is a rechargeable camera, so you just plug in, in over micro USB. So it has this nice magnetic front lens cover. And then you turn it on by opening the viewfinder. Ooh. It's very subtle. It went, sorry, just to recap, it went. The feedback on this camera is terrible. It doesn't have a nice shutter sound. It has a very faint beeping sound. If you're outdoors, you don't know that took a picture. Clearly, they invested everything in the thermal, in the thermal yeah, printing in the process, technology. and yeah. none in the in the user feedback. It does really color, see. black and white, and green scale. It's yeah. got a basic timer function. It's a Tyra function. It's got the Tyra function. For all you Tyra Banks fans out there, just push this button and it photoshops Tyra Banks into all of your pictures. Okay, let's take a picture. Take a picture. When you press the shutter, I'm going to start the timer just right. to time how long it's taking. Ready? Okay, ready. Set. Uh, go. Do it. Do it. That's, that's pretty instant. That's it's faster instant. than a Polaroid. Yeah. That's cool. Let's call it 38 seconds. And it's a sticker, so you can put it on your, your shirt or your refrigerator. Yeah, I'm gonna wear this for the rest of the episode. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So we, uh, we got this apart. It wasn't that bad. We found a little tiny camera which had no lenses. This is it, it's so small. It's the entire module. So there's not a lot around the optics of this. It's a single chip with a fixed focus lens. The real fancy mechanics are in here, which we're gonna take apart next. Assembly was pretty straightforward, sort of like a clamshell assembly or like a chassis based assembly. This is the center chassis, everything mounts to it. There's a few nice sort of spring mechanisms they have. The, the door and this adorable little... I love this guy. The lens. Hello! The other nice thing about this component is also the on switch. This little tiny micro switch, which is also the, the power button. Eep, eep. Uh, this, this is, is like... The rolling system. This is the rolling system. This, you'll find this in any inkjet printer or thermal printer. These are actually hard to engineer and a lot of kudos for making something this small and this accurate. But like anytime you've had a paper jam, it's because one of these systems isn't working right. The first sheet that comes out has this barcode. So it's read by these little IR pairs. So you've got genuine Polaroid zinc. <laughs> Move on to this thing, which is our magic module. It's got this big heat sink back. Right, it's smaller than we can see. This surface right here is heating up tiny, tiny little points which then activate sensitive crystals inside of the photo paper and create the color. And because this is too small to demonstrate, we have another tool we're going to show, which you know, sort of demonstrates how it works. It's a blowtorch. 
So imagine this heating up paper. So the thermal printers use a Leuco die. L-E-U-C-O. L-E-U-C-O. Die. Leuco is the Greek word for white. Hmm. Alone, these dyes are white, but when they combine with a type of acid, and when it runs across a print head, it heats up specific spots of it. And this is sort of similar to what we have, in the sense that it's white paper running across a little heater. But in this case, you just get black. Coming out of it. Our system is different, and we're gonna talk about that now. So the way they've done this is the paper is arranged in four layers with some heat control layers in between. So on the top layer, you've got a clear film. Uh, the layer beneath that is dedicated to the yellow color. Beneath that, is magenta and on the bottom most is the cyan and sorry beyond that you have the sticky paper back film so you can wear it on your shirt and all of those stack together in a really thin film so embedded on each of these layers are crystals what kind of crystals amorphochromic this is the term that Polaroid and zinc came up with but they're tautomer they're tautomers and a tautomer crystals is a chemical when it sort of goes through a transition, either through a catalyst or through heat or through interactions with proteins, part of the molecule moves to another side and it becomes a different molecule. So in this case, it moves from a clear or sort of white right. view to a color right. so that you get a photograph that comes out. Here's the question, if you apply heat, how do you transition that without affecting the other colors? I have an idea. What if the heat is a combination of the intensity and the duration? That makes sense. On the yellow one, we're going to hit it with a high pulse of heat. So that goes up to a high temperature. And we're gonna determine what this is, but so this is like high. And then when it cools off, boop, it becomes yellow. Yay. Magenta is not affected by that because it doesn't transition at this high temperature. It transitions at a medium temperature over a little longer period of time. So then when it cools off, it becomes magenta. And then cyan over a long period of time, and then when it transitions back, it becomes cyan. Right. And what's nice here is when I apply this low heat to the yellow, it doesn't transition, right? Mm -hmm. And when I apply this high heat pulse to cyan, because it's a short period of time, it doesn't transition to cyan. If I wanted to get a mixture like green, I would pulse the yellow and I would do the cyan and I would get green and then different combinations, I get different color amounts. In order to demonstrate this one other way, we have a soldering iron here. We're gonna use this as a paintbrush on the paper. Okay. So we're gonna set this at 650. And if I, all right, so I'm getting a little bit of both, so I gotta go faster. I'm mainly seeing yellows and, mag and magentas. Yeah, so if I go super fast at a certain speed, I get yellows. All right, now let's cool it down to 500. So if I go a little bit slower, mm -hmm. I should get a nice magenta. There we go. Nice. Our soldering iron doesn't get cold enough to do cyan, so we're gonna bring this bad boy back. Woo! The color change only happens when it cools back down. But you can see the yellow is sort of activating. Yep. But then... And then when it cools down, it darkens all back up. This thing's amazing. Yeah. It should be clear that like Polaroid is not a, it, it's a company right now, but it wasn't a company when this came out. It was really just a licensing deal. The real company here is Zinc Holdings. Zinc makes the, the paper. The other big company here is Alps. They make the print head. Mm -hmm. Maybe this technology could be scaled up to replace toner cartridges inside of regular printers. I mean, I think they would be so happy if they could just sell you reams of this stuff. One of the things that I think is a little bit tragic about Polaroid and then about this company is that when you're like the only company doing something, it gets lonely. So they have, they brag, they have like a thousand patents around all of this technology. But that's not always a good thing. There were a lot of different fastener types back when the Phillips head screw was invented. The one that won out, the Phillips head, was the one that sort of had the least amount of patenting and had the most amount of sharing. Instead of hooking up a camera to this, you could plug in uh, Illustrator or some type of graphic design program where you're just printing graphics and then you can optimize the colors and the patterns. I think that could be fun. Okay, so that's what we should do. Yeah. We should buy the printer version of this. Yeah. And then we should 
push graphics to it, super saturate stuff, see if we can get the printer to really shine. Mm -hmm. Make a business out of it. <laughs> a greeting card business? A greeting card business that prints stickers on demand. <laughs> I like it. <laughs>